Hey everyone, I'm Coach Shippies and I've been a professional top laner or head coach for the past 8 years. During this time I've reached Worlds and MSI multiple times. Now I'm a full time coach with a ton of passion towards helping players unlock their potential and climb to their dream rank. How's it going guys? Today we're going to be covering everything you need to know about how to learn and master Malphite. And a lot of you may be pretty surprised that I'm making such a detailed guide about a champion that's so easy, but that is exactly why. His abilities are so easy to use, that opens up a lot of space in your brain to be working on what you need to improve on as a player. You can work on your mid game, your map awareness, vision control, everything you need to be improving on is easy to do on this champion because you don't need to be thinking a lot about when to use your spells. Apart from his ulti, but for the most part his kit is pretty straightforward and also I've had a lot of requests to make a guide on a tank and Malphite of course the easiest tank to play. If you can learn the macro on this champion then that's going to apply to a lot of other tanks in the game and it's going to help you in your league journey overall. So if that sounds good to you guys let's get us started. So we're going to be starting the guide off with the rune pages and Malphite actually has five pages that you can use and I'm going to be breaking down in detail when to take each one. However keep in mind if you're feeling overwhelmed by how many choices you have and you're unsure when to take each one in specific situations I am going to be showing at the end when I would take each of these pages against which matchups and hopefully that'll really help you understand when to take each one. The first page we're going to be covering is the grass page and this is one of Malphite's most standard pages and you're going to be taking it in most tank matchups and a lot of melee matchups. So champions such as Fiora such as Renekton where they're looking to jump onto you having grass can help a lot because you're of course going to E them slow their attack speed to auto W kite out the trade and it's going to end like that and the extra healing and damage from grass was going to help a lot. It's also very very powerful with Malphite's W because the W gives you enhanced attack range. So when they go up to farm, when they go up to get a last hit with their melee champion, you can of course try to proc W onto them, get grasp at the same time, and then walk away. And if they jump onto you, of course, EQ run off, and it's very very hard for them to do anything. So you're able to chip them down slowly using your W range and the grasp, and essentially you're going to be looking for an all in later on with your ulti. But for the most part, it's very very hard for them to play against you if they jump onto you, free grasp proc for you, proc E and Q run away. If they go to last hit you can proc w and grasp at the same time and it's essentially very very powerful for laning against most melee champions now to go through the runes in this tree you're going to be wanting to take demolish every game the value you're going to gain from this rune will far outweigh the other two if your lane opponent ever makes a mistake takes a bad back dies to a gank demolish is going to be very good there you're going to be able to break a plate or two and you're going to be able to get a lead based purely from their mistake where if you didn't have it you're not going to really do much damage to the tower and as for the second rune, you're going to be taking a second win in matchups where they hit you a lot. So champions like Cho'Gath, champions like Gragas, it can be good. And bone plating versus champs that can't proc it without fully committing. So champs like Riven and champs like Jax, bone plating will be very valuable. And as for conditioning, I'd only take this in free matchups. So matchups like Sejuani, it can be quite good. But if you're confident, if you've played some matchups before like Scion, and you're confident you can get away with it without second win, then of course conditioning is going to be more valuable than that. And as for the final rune, you'll be taking Overgrowth. I don't really like Unflinching on Malphite because if you need CC re reduction, you're going to build Merc Treads. And stacking Merc Treads and Unflinching together, of course, has diminishing returns, so it's not that worth it overall. And Overgrowth is really good on Malphite because you get so much armor on this champion, you want to have a high HP bar as well. And as for the secondary range, you're going to be taking Inspiration with Cookies and Cosmic Insight. Malphite can get quite mana hungry, so having Cookies is going to help you a lot. And Cosmic Insight is very good because lower TP cooldown for lane, very powerful, and lower flash cooldown is really good because a lot of Malphite's team fighting is based around him being able to flash ulti, especially when you start versing better players. It's not You're not going to be able to just ult them from max range. Flash ulting is a lot faster, a lot harder to react to, so I definitely recommend Cosmic Insight every single time. And as for the final three runes, you're going to be taking attack speed every game because it pairs very well with Malphite's W. And then as for your other two runes, you'll be taking armor and HP. However, if you are versus AD top and jungle, you can run double armor. And if you're versus an AP champ in lane, you of course can take magic resist. Next, we're going to be covering Malphite's second most common rune page, the Arcane Comet page. And I see a lot of people take this in bad situations in the times where it's good are versus ranged matchups or in matchups where the damage is actually going to make a difference. So the second part is a bit complicated, but for the most part, ranged matchups, it can be very good because Doran's shield is less effective on ranged champions. And if you take Comet versus a melee champ, he's just going to run second win in Doran's shield and the Comet is not going to be very useful. Now, champions like Jace, champions like Kennen, of course, can't build Doran Shield very well, can't take second win very well, so the damage is going to help a lot. And even some champs that build Doran Shield, like Gangplank, Comet's still going to be very good because he has such little sustain, and you actually have a ton of kill third on this matchup if you have that little bit of extra damage. 
And as for the runes in this tree, it's pretty easy, you don't need to change them much, where you're going to be taking mana flow every game, because of course Malphite acquire mana hungry, and every single point you put in Q, where on this build you're going to be maxing Q, or at the very least three points in Q, every point you put in there, the mana cost is going to go up. So mana flow is going to help with that, and then you're going to be taking Transcendence, because CDR on tank Malphite is a lot more useful than a little bit of AP from Absolute Focus, and then you're going to be running Scorch. Now Scorch is the most important part of this page, of course Scorch and Comet together, once you start to get 3-4 points into Q, it's going to do a ton of damage. And then for the secondary runes, Cosmic Inside again, and Cookies, because even though you have some mana regen from Mana Flow Band, you're still maxing Q or putting a lot of points into Q, the mana cost is going to get quite high, so having both of them together is going to be very useful. And then as for the other runes, you're going to be taking Adaptive Force, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or MR, depending on what matchup you're in. And you don't really need attack speed on this, because this laning is more about Q spam, as opposed to beating them down with your W, so the attack speed is not as useful. Now for our next page, I'm very excited to showcase this one, and that is the First Strike page. And I haven't really seen it around very often, it's not that popular, but of course to make this guide, I did a ton of research. And a lot of the good Malphites, especially in Korea, they love the First Strike build. Because in matchups where the poke from Comet is not going to be very useful, but of course you can't just beat them down with Grasp, you're not really going to win those trades, you just want to be keeping your distance, procking first strike on them with your Q, and just farming it out. And this build, there's a unique build that comes with this rune page, which is very fun, and I'll cover that in the item build section of the guide, but for now, in terms of runes, I really rate this rune page. I thought it was a joke at first, I thought the one tricks were getting lost in the source a bit, but I tried it out a ton this week, and it's just so strong. And I, the only reason I think it hasn't caught on yet is because who's studying Malphite? Who's putting the time and researching this champion and pushing the limits onto him? No one really. There's not a ton of people, especially in high rank, with Malphite as their most played or top 3 most played. It's just a pretty rare champion to see people spam. They just pick it as a counter pick in good situations, but most of the time they're not really pushing the limits on this champion. And this rune, I wouldn't say pushes the limits of it, but it's very very good in certain situations, and I'll cover when you should take it later. But for now, just keep in mind that in matchups where the poke is not going to be very useful, they have Darn Shield second win, and also you're not going to be able to beat them with grass. you're not going to go near them and fight them, some very hard matchups like Champs like Volibear, champs like Darius, you of course don't really want to fight them. First Strike is very, very good on those matchups, and you just take it with the intention of scaling. And as for the runes in this tree, you're going to be taking free boots, because of course the way you're playing out these lands, you're playing the scale, and free boots is just an extra 300 gold. And then you're going to be taking cookies, of course your champion quite minor hungry, like we talked about, and then Cosmic Insight, best rune in the game. And now this is where the page gets a bit interesting, where you get to take Domination on top of it. And with that, you can take Taste of Blood and Ultimate Hunter. And Taste of Blood, of course, very good because your Q is going to heal you every time it's up. Quite nice for landing. And Ultimate Hunter, as you can imagine, is so strong on Malphite because ulting is a big part of your kit. And having the cooldown up more often is going to be very useful. And most of the time, you can't really take Domination on Malphite because you're too mana hungry. If you don't take cookies, you're really going to struggle or you just want Cosmic Insight. But on this page, you can actually get both, which is very, very strong. And then for the final range, you take Adaptive Force, Adaptive Force, and Armor or MR. And you mainly take double Adaptive Force, even though you're not really trying to poke them down that much. It's just you're going to do extra damage with your Qs, because you are still putting 3 points in Q on this page, because that's how you're trading. You're just Qing them and proccing first strike, and even though you're not really going to be poking them down that much, because you don't have Comet, you're still going to be able to do a significant bit of damage, just from the double Adaptive Force with first strike, and the items you're going to be building. I'm next going to be covering the press the attack page, and the times I recommend you to take this page are in matchups where you can actually win the extended all-in. So champions like Yasuo, champions like Irelia, champs like Kled, because you can lower their attack speed so much with your E, it's very hard for them to beat you. They can't really auto-attack you, and since you're maxing W, you have PTA, you can really start to beat them down and actually win all-in situations. However, if you're just starting Malphite, then it's easier just to default to grasp in melee matchups, but as you start to get more comfortable, PTA can be good in champions in matchups like that. And as for the runes in this tree, you're going to be taking Prince of Mind every game, because of course Malphite, Mana Hungry Champion, and then you're going to be taking Alacrity or Tenacity. And I recommend Alacrity most of the time, because if you need Tenacity, you'll just build Merc Treads, but you can take Tenacity and build Merc Treads, you can stack them together in games where they have a lot of CC, Sejuani, Maokai, champs like that, if they have multiple of them, then of course you can take both. And then for the final rune, you'll be taking Coup de Gras. Even though I recommend Last Stand on basically every other champion in the game, Coup de Gras is better on Malphite because you're going to be doing most of your damage when you're full HP and they're low. You're going to be ulting onto the backline, auto WEQ, using all your spells, and essentially 
Last Stand's not going to be useful for that, but if they're if you're able to one-shot them, the damage difference of Coup de Gras can help sometimes. And then for the secondary runes, Cosmic Insight and Cookies, of course. Mana Hungry Champion, Cosmic Insight, best rune in the game. Lower Flash, lower TP cooldown. You really need this on Malphite. And then for the final runes, Attack Speed, because of course this is still Tank Malphite, W Max. And then you're going to be taking Armor and HP. Or you can take Magic Resist if you need it, or Double Armor versus AD Top and Jungle. But for the most part, these runes won't really change that much apart from the last three. And as for the final rune page, we have the Summon Airy page. And I recommend this similar situation as the Comet versus ranged champions and matches where they can't really take Doran Shield or Second Wind very well. However, I do want to preface this by saying, do not take this page if you're an elo bracket slower than Diamond, because I've found for the most part those players aren't dodging the Comet. And that's the only reason you really take this page, because some matchups they can dodge your Comet. So champs like Kennen can dodge it with his E, Jace can dodge it with Hammer Q, Quinn can dodge it with Hurry, so on and so forth, where for the most part in brackets lower than Emerald, I don't really see that happening, so I'd still recommend Comet, because it does more damage as long as they're not dodging it. But if you find you've been playing a few games now of Malphite and people are dodging your Comet on champs like Kennen, champs like Nah, then of course you can look to make the switch to airy i just recommend the lower elo bracket you're in of course comet's going to have more value and as for the runes in this tree they are the exact same as the comet page so if you miss that section you can always go back to it but you're just going to be taking mana flow transcendent scorch and then cosmic cookies with double adaptive and either armor and ad matchups or magic resistant ap matchups and to finish it off i did promise you guys i'd make it easy for you to know when to take each rune so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to show you exactly when i would take each rune for which matchup and then hopefully that'll give you some inspiration there will be some variables depending on which bracket i'd be playing in but this is what I would be taking in high yellow. Keeping in mind, I recommend not taking PTA or Airy. If you're in matchups around Emerald and below, you can look to put the PTA matchups up in Grasp or the Airy matchups in the comment section and really simplify it. Then you only have three pages to choose from and you're going to get more used to the limitations of the rune and how much damage each one does and so on. But for the most part, this is what I'd be taking. So hopefully this helps you decide when to take each rune. Our next we'll be covering summoner spells, and this won't take very long as it's pretty straightforward on Malphite, but you're going to be running Flash and TP almost every single game. Now Flash is of course very good in general, but it's good on Malphite because a lot of people you'll find can actually flash your ulti if they're thinking about it, if they see you coming. But not a lot of people can actually dodge your Flash ulti, where if they're in range of you, of your ulti, they're probably thinking about, okay he's going to ult me, I'm going to flash you when he does it, but if you drop the instant Flash ulti, it's very hard for them to react to it. And especially in Challenger and even pro games, that's how you catch a lot of the best ADCs off guard, by the Flash ult, where they're trying to bait out your ulti by giving you range and looking to flash it, but they're not really expecting the Flash ulti. So Flash is of course very good on Malphite in general, take that every game, and then you're just deciding between TP and Ignite. And I would recommend TP almost every time because one, you're a tank champion, you don't want to be stuck inside without TP ever, you want to be a part of as many team fights as possible, and then also if you take Ignite anyway, it doesn't really mean you're going to kill your lane. If anyone is dying to Malphite pre-6, they've got some serious problems with their laning, but I would take it in elo brackets gold or blue in certain matchups. Matchups like Aurelia, matchups like GP, where Ignite will give you a ton of kill pressure, but for me personally in high elo, the only time I'd take Ignite is versus Silas. Next up, we're going to be covering item builds. Now, for your starting item, you're going to be running Thorin's Ring or Thorin's Shield, and the ring is better in matchups where the poke is actually going to matter. So matchups where they don't have a lot of regen or they struggle to build Thorin's Shield second win. So champs like Kennen, champs like Narge, champs like GP, they're, most of them are range. Of course, GP is merely, but the poke damage, the extra damage from Thorin's Ring, is actually going to matter a lot in those matchups. And Thorin's Shield is best in games where you take Grasp because you're going to be taking a lot of short trades, proccing W and Grasp. So Thorin's Shield is going to be very good in those matchups. And most of those champions you're versing, tanky champs, tanky bruises the poke of q and orange ring is not actually going to matter that much but to really simplify it for you in games where you take comet orange ring will probably be best in games where you take grass orange shield will be best and there are some variables that you'll learn later on but as a starting point that is going to be a pretty general good rule to follow we go on to your first buy. If you're versing an AD champion in lane, ideally you're going to be rushing Bramble Vest, because this item is just so good on Malphite. It gives you armor, which of course Malphite scales with armor, good versus the AD champ, and it also gives healing cut, where even if you verse a champ like Jax or Camille, where they don't have a ton of healing, it's still going to help. It cuts their health regen, Doran Shield, second win, everything they're taking when they go on to you. It's just going to add up in the long run, and essentially it's just a very good first buy to get on Malphite, because it's so cheap, it's so easy, and it works so well with its kit, and it's going to help you along your trades. And now for Barmy Cinder and matchups where that's not going to necessarily be best to build brambles so other tanks it can be really good 
because it's going to help you with your wave clear where essentially you can just keep the enemy tank stuck under tower if it's a matchup where you win look to roam look to impact the map and then if he does go on to you the damage is going to help in trades as well and as for negatron cloak i'd only build it when you reverse ap lane bullies so champs like rumble vladimir it can be very good because without it you know just going to be essentially taking true damage but ideally you would just go a uh, null magic mantle and build it to juck show early on but if you need it if you're struggling in the matchup then of course negatron will be really good Moving down to the first item, you're going to be building Sunfire Cape in non-interactive lands. So what I mean by that are matchups where you can't really do any damage to each other or kill each other around the one item mark. So champions like Scion, champs like Poppy, champs like Shen, you're not really going to kill each other unless someone makes a big mistake. So it's better to build Sunfire Cape and play for the push and move style. Of course, Sunfire, very good wave clear. It's going to help you one shot the wave. And even if they go on you, the wave's still going to get cooked down. So it's very easy for you to play that push and move style where Iceborne is best versus champions that are going to be fighting you in their AD. Because this item just gives pure armor, no real magic resist or anything like that. So you only build it when they have AD top and jungle, or at the very least you need it versus their top laner. So champs like Fiora, you know, they need to be cutting around you popping vitals. Iceborne's really good because it's hard for her to get those vitals pop during the slow. Champs like Camille, champs like Renekton, it's hard for them to kite in and out around you when you're slowing them. So it's really good. I would just be careful versus AP mid and jungles because of course you're not getting any magic resist and you might have even built ninja tabbies early where you're just going to have so much armor, no MR, you're essentially going to be taking true damage from those AP champs. So Jack Show is a good middle ground where it gives armor, MR, HP. This item's really strong. I'd build this in any other situation basically then you're not building Iceborne and Sunfire. So games where you need MR or games where you're not really where you do need to have some strength to fight back when they go on to you but you don't want to be overstacking on that armor and the slow is not that useful now as for your boots you're going to be building steel caps in games where you're versus an ad champion or they have a heavy ad top jungle and merc treads versus ap champs in lane and having merc treads early can be quite good versus certain ap champs where it's pretty hard to itemize mr early on malphite of course he prefers building armor but in some cases you can go barmies into merc treads into sunfire and it's not too bad so that's a good balance where you're still getting the mr for lane and you're getting essentially just hp and mr early you're not wasting money on armor until the lane is just about done and then for cooldown boots i'd build these in either free match so matchups like we talked about before shen poppy scion or in matchups where in game sorry where i base with enough gold for them but not enough gold for the other boots so if i base with enough to finish my sunfire and get cooldown boots i probably would and look to run onto the map and be as strong as possible on that spike and then as for swiftness boots i'd only really build these versus olaf you don't really build them very often but you do build them sometimes so i have them here champs like olaf champs like nasa swifty boots can be quite good Moving on to your second item. Now you're going to be building Thornmail in games where you've either already got the Bramble, of course it's a lot cheaper to upgrade that item than to buy a whole new one from scratch, or in games where you just need the healing cup from this point. Let's say they have champs like Soraka, of course it can be good, and as for the Sunfire Cape, it falls into the same vein, where if you've already got Barmy Cinder, let's say you went Barmy's into Protein, finishing the Sunfire Cape can be good at that point. But I'd never build it from scratch as a second item, I'd only do it if I already have the Barmy's from early game. And then as for Abyssal Mask, I'll just build this in games where you need the magic resist, which is most games. You're not versing many full AD comps if you're a Malphite or it's a free win. And I would keep in mind, especially if you're building Sunfire first or, sorry, Iceborne first, where if you have an Iceborne first and you've got Ninja Tabbies, especially Bramble Vest, you've just got so much armor, you definitely need Abyssal Mask in that situation. And then in games where you've got the Jock Show early, you can be a bit more greedy and get two armor items because you still get a little bit of MR from the Jock Show. Moving on to your third item, it's similar to before, Thornmail when you need the healing cut, Abyssal Mask when you either need MR or there's an AP champ on your team playing quite well, you can build this to help them, and Frozen Art is very good versus at comps with multiple auto attackers. So let's say they have a normal ADC with a Kindred Jungle, Frozen Art can be really good, or even if they have an Azir mid. First champs like Azir, if you have Protein into Abyssal Mask into Frozen Art, it's very hard for them to play. And this item is pretty good on Malphite, but it's overused, just make sure you're versing multiple auto attackers. It's not really good when you're versus just an ADC and then the rest of the comp is quite normal champs. You really want to see at least two, primarily from jungle or mid and AD, before you build this item. Moving on to your fourth and fifth items, you might notice these are primarily support items, and that's just because from this point in the game, you're probably already extremely tanky. Three item on Malphite, be getting a bit of extra armor, a bit of extra MR is not really going to make a difference, because of course the more of a resist you build, the less effective it is, it has diminishing returns. 
So from this point in the game, especially when you're versing 4 to 5 item 80 carries and mid lane champs, you're not really going to be as tanky as you were, especially if they have champs like Vayne, champs like Azir, they're really going to start to shred you, so you really just need your team to be alive, because it's this point in the game where everyone's full build, where they're the ones that need to carry, you might have carried the boats early game, but now it's their turn, and for that situation, support items can be quite good. So to go through each of the items one by one, you're going to be putting chains in games where they have one main threat, so let's say they have a Kog'Maw who's carrying and no one else is, chains can feel really good in that situation, Nice Val can be good in games where you have someone on your team playing well, but they keep dying. They can't survive the Talon, the Zed, they need all the help they can get. So in that situation, marking them with Nice Val can help a lot. And games where Zonia's is good are in games where you're still the hard engage. Of course, you're hard engaging for the boys, but you don't feel they're tanky anymore. They have a vein, they have champs that just shred you, champs like Darius. Zonia's can feel really good in that situation because you ult in, get your hard engage off, but you're not essentially a free kill anymore. So you can pop Zonia's, buy more time, come back out, use your combo again, and essentially engage and buy more time then if you have to build any other item. And as for redemption, it's good versus AoE comps, so champs like Karthus, of course you can AoE heal your team to block his ult, champs like Ziggs, stuff like that, it can feel quite nice, but I wouldn't build this that often, it's just good in certain situations. And as for Force of Nature, this is just a secondary MR item if you've already got Abyssal Mask, but you just need more MR from this point in the game. And I've also got some full build examples for you down below, they're pretty standard Malphite builds, there's not much variation to them, and even if you were to just copy these blindly without really thinking about it, you're probably going to be fine starting off, but I do recommend starting to think about it because if you double stack armor like I talked about before and you're getting one shot by the MR champs it's going to be problematic so for the most part you need to know when you can actually greed the most armor as possible and when you need to slip in some MR items and you'll get the hang of it from there but as a starting point these builds are pretty good so they won't do you wrong. Up next we have the AP build, and before I started doing my research for this guide, I always thought AP Malphite was pretty bad. I thought it was a bit of a joke build you used to mess around with in normal games, and I never really thought it was viable, but I've changed my mind. I researched the good Korean one tricks, and they really value this build, and I tried it myself all week, and it just feels extremely powerful, in the right situations, where you run first strike and you rush Rod of Ages, starting with Sapphire Crystal of course to get your rower as quickly as possible, the faster you get it the better, of course it'll start scaling, it'll start stacking quicker, and you just have a nice balance between a bit of tankiness from the rower, a bit of HP from it, and also once you start to get two items, you really start to come online, because you start, you play a bit differently than tank Malphite, where you need to be more creative, look to get flanks, look to cheese people when they go for vision, but you really start to do a lot of damage and stack up a lot of money because as they walk in face check you, you ulti full combo them. Even if you don't kill them, you're going to boost out of there with the Q movement speed and you're going to make around 150 to 200 gold depending on how late in the game it is from just proccing first strike. And you really start to get your items quicker and quicker. And especially because you're taking ultimate hunter with this build, you're going to be ulting more often, stacking more money quicker. And in games where you get ahead in your lane, it just feels incredible. So we'll go through it now, but I'll teach you how to use it in the mid game section. So I look forward to that. And as for the items specifically, you're going to be looking to start Sapphire Crystal because you want to be rushing Catalyst as fast as you can. Because this item feels incredible as a first buy if you can get it. Of course in some matchups you won't be able to, but if you can you're really going to feel the difference because this item gives you so much health regen and mana regen that you can all of a sudden spam your Q and you're not too worried if they get a trade onto you. And you're only going to be going 3 points in Q on this build because you really want to be maxing out your E to get your wave clear up so you can push and move, but 3 points in Q is going to feel good for proccing it every time first strike is up, and then when you have Catalyst, you can just Q off cooldown and you're not too worried about the mana cost. And then as for the Rod of Ages, you really want to be building this as fast as you can, getting it stacking early, and looking to come online as fast as you can. Now as for your boots, I recommend Steel Caps vs AD Champions because you're going to be getting a lot of HP from the Rod of Ages, that's going to feel quite good having these two items together, and cooldown boots if tabbies aren't that useful. And then Merc Treads if you really need it, and Swiftness boots vs Olaf and Nasus. But I do want you to know that you're not going to be building your boots until you finish Rod of Ages, because you want to be getting it as fast as possible, you don't want to be spending 1100 gold on shoes before you get it, and delaying the spike. Moving down to the second item, I never really understood why the one tricks were building Lichbane at first because this item's just not very cost efficient. But after testing it, I understood where first of all, most of your targets are going to be the low MR targets, the ADC, the mid lane mage, the immobile backline. So champs with no MR, Lichbane can feel quite good. But the other reason is because it gives movement speed. Where this in tandem to your Q really helps AP Malphite's playstyle. We're going to be ulting in, full combo, and running away. You're not going to be sitting there beating them down, getting one shot by their team. You're going to be cutting in and out of the fight with your Q movement speed and the extra MS from Lichbane helps with that. However, I do recommend only building this in games where you're ahead, games where you're snowballing, 
because they're going to be able to get MR by the time you get it and it's not going to feel very good. Where Shadow Flame is just a safer option because this item also gives HP. This item's more consistent in games where you're even or slightly behind, it can feel good. And then some situations, of course, when they have heavy AP comps, Banshees is good. And in games where they have heavy AD comps, Zonyas can feel really good. Or even in games where they have a lot of burst spells that you can block. Champs like Zed, champs like Karthus, Zonyas can be really strong in that situation. And as for your third item, you're going to be building Death Cap in games where you're snowballing quite well, keeping up the pressure, because if you're snowballing from that point, you're going to be getting so much money from your ult and first strike procs that it's going to fund nicely towards your Death Cap. And then in some games, even if you're snowballing or if you're not playing too well, Zonyas is going to be very good as a third item. This item is very consistent. You can ulti in full combo and essentially just Zonyas, waste their time. And then Lich Bane, in games where you need the magic pin, let's say their AD carry rushed them more, their mid lane's building banshees, stuff like that, then Void Staff can feel really good, and Abyssal Mask I'd build if you need MR. And also, this item's a lot better than banshees later on on this build, because it gives you a bit of beefiness, a bit of tankiness, and also it allows your team to do a bit more damage, and banshees is really more selfish, where I really wouldn't be building it as 3-4 to four items on Malphite. And as for the rest of your build, they're the exact same items with the same reasoning behind each one, but I put some examples down below of full builds where if you're snowballing, if you're carrying the game, the full AP build is a lot better, where in games where you're even or slightly behind, then in that situation you would be looking to build Shadow Flame, a bit more tanky, a bit more HP, and you're still going to be doing more damage in AP Malphite, but you're still going to have a bit of a front line for your team. Up next we're going to be covering the laning phase, and the way Malphite plays out his lane is pretty matchup specific, so I am going to show a few examples, but starting us off we have Malphite vs Gragas, where even though Gragas beats Malphite in lane, Malphite can win early game. So I would try level 1 because I'm looking to get push, and normally I may start W in matchups like this and look to punch him with my W, using the extra range looking to prog grasp, but Gragas I was worried he would start E and look to cancel my auto attack with his E, missed a couple creeps there, unlucky, but for the most part I skilled E because I thought he would eat me away, and there if I buffer the E before he knocks me back, I can still get the damage down and get my farm at the same time. So here I look to proc my grasp while my shield was up, so playing around my passive cooldown and I hit level 2 first. So of course I skilled W and looked to beat him down, and now even though I have grasp up now, I don't want to run towards him because I'm playing around my W and my passive cooldown, where here I mistimed the passive slightly, and I'm pretty sure a minion ruined it, which was frustrating. But for the most part, that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to play around my W and my passive cooldown and look to proc grass with my W every time I can while maintaining push because of course with Malphite's W and E it's quite easy to get push in a lot of matchups and Gragas is no exception. We're here, E, him and the minion at the same time. And then, unfortunately, there I'd use my W on a minion, where I'd normally use it on him. But for the most part, I'm just looking to get pushed and poke him down with my W. And here's a good example of using the W's extra attack range, where I proc it here, and I'm looking to auto space him back and forwards, where, of course, he's going to look to trade back onto me, but I get extra range to them from my W, so as long as I know... Okay, he's probably going to walk back towards me, he's not going to let me hit him for free, especially when he has a spell like his W, then I can look to space him back and forwards, back and forwards while maintaining auto attacks, and then if he just walks away, right, he's near his tower anyway, I probably wasn't going to get extra autos down in the first place. So here, I managed to get my push down, and in some games I would look to base here. But this is not the case, because I'm so high HP and mana, and of course I have TP, there's no real threat of me being stuck in the lane. And here he uses his E on a minion, well tried to, so I'm able to get a good trade, and essentially just punish him. Where here I am maxing my E, and in a lot of matchups I max W, in a lot of grass matchups, but versus Gragas I do E because it's pretty hard for you to get a lot of continuous auto attacks onto him with W. Where here, he, because I've been trading on him this whole lane, I looked to space him with my W, I was able to get this kill. And unluckily, I had to flash away, but for the most part, this kill is a result of me knowing, okay, Gregus beats me in lane, but not early game. So I'm going to look to abuse that, and he didn't know that. He just counterpicked me with Gregus, so he expected to win the whole time. But every time my W was up, I was looking to punish him with it, where I can use the extra range and the grass procs to continuously trade. Now for our next example, I'm going to play this on 2 times speed because nothing really happened, but I just wanted to showcase and talk you through what a basic lane on Malphite's going to be, because you're not always going to be able to kill them. You're not playing Fiora, you're not playing Camille, the laning phase is not always going to be flashy. Your strength comes later on in the game, and there's going to be some matchups where nothing really happens, and that is okay. So this is just one of those lanes where he's counterpicked me with Volibear, where he gets push, and there's no really way I can kill him. He's going to have Thorn Shield, Second Wind, even if I take Comet, the poke's not going to do anything, so it's a non-interactive lane. So I take First Strike, like we talked about before, and I'm just looking to stack money off him, farm my farm, and then when he bases, I'm just going to make sure I don't get stuck in the lane. Now, a lot of people you verse will have bad wave control. 
there's not very many people in this game below master tier that understand how to use the waves to make people leave their tower and this volley bear is no exception where even though he is high rank he doesn't know how to make me gankable so he's just permanently pushing this wave pushing it under my tower and i'm able to farm for free which is really good for me my strength comes later on in the game i don't have to worry about beating him in lane so I'm just looking to stack my first strike onto him and base when I can. So the only way I'm going to get behind if he plays like this is if I miss my back timer. So here I am pretty sure he based. So I use this timer to one shot the next wave. Because if I'm slow pushing this wave and he comes back to lane. Then he can look to freeze my slow push onto me. Where if I fast push this one here. Then I can get a base off alongside him where if he was better if he stayed in this lane if he fake based he could look to freeze those six minions of course and in that situation i would have to base in tp but that's reality i've been counterpicked by this volley bear my champion's extremely weak early game but for the most part i just want to be ping ponging the ways back and forwards until i can get ulti until i can be a part of the game later on but in this situation he gave me a free base and i took it which is what you really need to be looking for on malphite in these bad matchups your lane opponent's going to slip up, he's going to let you base, and then you have to be able to take it. And it's really easy on Malphite to take the base because you can one-shot the wave, unless it's a cannon wave, very easy with your W and E. So as long as you're keeping that in mind in these hard matchups, you're going to be fine. Up next, I'm going to be teaching you a general rule of laning on Malphite where you don't want to be late getting back to lane. So here, my whole team calls for an invade where I should have based. I should have known that I'm Malphite, I don't want to be a part of this, but I can still come if we go straight away. But here, they're late invading, which means I can't really be a part of this. My champ's not that useful level one anyway, and I don't want to be late to lane because what will happen is here, if I skip forward, where... They see us late invading, they're trying to take our red, I have to defend this. Now, all of a sudden, I'm late back to my lane. And the reason this is a problem is because Malphite's for level 1 is so weak, you lose to a lot of champions, and champions like Darius, champions like Olaf can look to get a really good trade onto you and catch you getting back to lane. Where if you walk into your lane with the minions, so I'll pause, imagine the minions are walking in, if I walk in alongside them, and then I can look to either ward this bush level 1 or walk into it, and if they turn onto me all the minions will chase them, then all of a sudden I can get back to lane, I can get my XP and a lot of matchups, and this situation won't happen. So just make sure when you're playing Malphite, you're not going to be able to leash, you're not going to be able to lane invade, you need to be in lane level one as the minion wave is coming in. And for our last example, we have Malphite versus Aatrox, where in this matchup, he doesn't have a ton of poke onto me. The only real poke he has is his Q1 with E, where I'm going to be blocking there with my shield, so Doran's shield's not necessary. So I look to take D-Ring. But the reason I don't take Comet is, first of all, he can dodge it with his E, but second of all, he's going to be going Doran shield second wind, so Comet, the damage is not really going to do much, so I'd rather have the extra scaling from the first strike build. So here I do just that, I take first strike, and I'm looking to just stack as much money on him as I can while maximizing my CS, and normally, I'm pretty sure I don't do it in this game, for some reason, maybe I look to play more aggressive level 3, but normally you're going to be looking to do 2 points in Q in games where you run Doran's Ring, because the damage is really going to start to add up. Now, I'm just letting the lane come into me, looking to poke him, looking to last hit, and essentially look. See, every time he QEs me, I've got a my passive shield, so Doran's shield would be completely useless. I'd rather have the extra damage from D-Ring, the extra mana regen, than the health regen that's not really going to be doing anything in this matchup. But here, I'm able to essentially play more aggressively, and I'm able to dodge his Q here and to get a pretty good trade there. Not the best trade, but maybe that's why I took W. I was looking to play... Bit more chad in that angle but most of the time you're going to be doing two points in q we're here nothing is really going to happen on early game malphite if you solo kill your lane or level one or two on malphite either they've done something incredibly wrong or you're just the next faker we're here i see i get level four while he's level three so i look for a trade opportunity where i'm actually able to win this trade and this is something important where i know i can't kill him from flashing there but i flash anyway because i want to trade flashes with him because that means when i get level six I'm going to be invincible, right? If I get ganked, I can ulti away. There is no problem. But he can never survive a gank when I'm level 6. He is going to get killed instantly by me and my jungler as long as he doesn't have flash. Because if I get a gank and he flashes my ult, all of a sudden they can look to fight Herald or, you know, he's not even going to die. He's going to waste my jungler's time. It's not ideal. But if I can trade flashes on him with him early game, then it's really, really strong. So here, the wave's coming back towards me and he has no flash. Where even though I don't have six, it's still an ideal situation. Where the wave's coming back towards me. So of course I can't die to a gank if I'm respecting and he has to essentially crash this wave while respecting my jungler. And then even if he respects this timer, He's playing extremely safe. He doesn't get punished. I'm going to get level 6 eventually. He's going to have no flash. It's going to be very hard for him to CS. So that's a big concept I recommend 
working on on Malphite is if you can, you're not always going to be able to, but if you can, trade flashes with your lane opponent early. And here we're able to kill him because I did just that. Or if he had flash, he is essentially, not essentially, he's definitely going to live. There's no chance of this kill happening and Graves is going to have wasted his time. But here, because I traded flashes earlier by playing... I wouldn't say too aggressively, but playing to my limits, abusing that I got level 4 before him, we are able to get a Q and snowball my graves. I'm next going to be covering abilities, tips, and tricks, where we'll start off with his Q, where mid-game especially, when you're looking to push and roam, push and join your team, you want to be ending your wave clear with your Q to maximize the movement speed. So you one-shot the wave, Q the final creep as you're running away, and you're going to be getting around the map faster essentially, where you can look to Q scuttle as well, Q any camps you're running past, and just essentially abusing that movement speed. My second piece of advice for his Q is when you Q an enemy champion, of course the minions are going to look to turn onto you, you're hitting their boy, but if you're able to Q them and run away before the Q actually hits them, then the minions won't aggro onto you. So I'll share an example here, where if I just Q this guy, all his minions will turn onto me, right? So I have to reset it in the bush, but if I Q him and I space it enough where I'm queuing max range and running away from the creeps, they are not going to turn onto me. So here... None of the minions looked at me, right? So that's an extremely important point, especially when you're playing the combat Malphite build or just looking to poke them down in general. You really don't want to be ruining your minion wave by doing so. And for some more advice around his Q, I'm not really going to show an example, I'll just talk you through it, where you only really want to be queuing early game around your Comet's cooldown, because if you just spam Q level 1 every time it's up, you're going to run out of mana before you've done any meaningful damage. But if you just queue them every time your Comet is up, then you're maximizing your damage per mana point. And the same situation applies when you're close to a level up. You don't really want to be chucking your Q when you're 1 or 2 minutes off leveling up, because once you level up, you get an extra point in the Q that's going to maximize your damage per mana point as well. Moving on to Malphite's W, and one of the only mechanics Malphite really has is the fact that his W is an auto attack reset. So I'll show you here where you auto W, and you essentially get an extra auto attack in for free and maximize your DPS. And the final point about Malphite's W is it actually gives you extra attack range on the active. So I'll showcase it here, where if I press W and hit him, I'm going to whack him from far away and then move forward after once my W active is used. So here's the example where I hit him and then Malphite walks forward to continue bashing. So this is extremely useful for lane, punishing people for going for CS and proccing your grasp. Moving on to Malphite's E, it's a pretty straightforward ability, it's just an AoE damage around you that slows attack speed, but you need to be using that attack speed so well, because I see a lot of people make the mistake where they just ulti and E straight away, they get too excited, where in a lot of situations it's actually better to E at the end of your knockup duration. So here, for example, we're at ulti, they're CC'd now. Now that they've hit the floor, they're not knocked up anymore, their attack speed is all slowed for the full 3 second duration, where if I eat straight away, a couple of the seconds being wasted on the knockup, the E is not really getting its maximum value. Now up next we have Malphite's ulti, which is of course the most important part of his kit, and I'll cover exactly how you should be using it in the teamfight section of the guide, but for now I'll just talk you through some basic mechanics and concepts you need to know, where Malphite's ulti can actually be sped up if you use it halfway through a wall, where here if I ulti normally, this is the normal speed but if i put my cursor past halfway through this wall it's gonna essentially push me through the other side because riot doesn't want me to get stuck in the wall and it's gonna speed up the ult speed so here it's a lot faster than if i were to just ulti normally if i'm able to get it through the wall and it's pretty hard to do in a real game to be honest i don't see it that often but it's especially good in these situations where your team's controlling river and they're looking to walk in through this choke then you can get them with a faster ulti where it's hard for them to flash it now as you start to skirmish and teamfight on Malphite, it's going to be very tempting to ult the enemy AD carry as soon as he's in range. However, that can be a bit of a trap. If you don't know if they have flash or not, you have to be very careful with what you do. Because if they don't have flash, of course it's a free ulti, but if they do and they flash your ulti, not only is your most useful spell not useful anymore, you've used it on cooldown, not hit anybody, now all of a sudden you're a free target for him and the rest of his team to hit. But the way to counteract that is even if you're in range of them, even if they see you, you want to be looking to flash ulti, because it's a lot harder for them to react to it than a long range ulti, which of course you move slowly towards them, it's so much easier for them to flash that than a flash ult. And this works even in challenger, even in pro play against players like Gumayasi, I've seen Keen do it very much where he just looks to flash ult him, even if he's in close range, because he knows if he just ults from far away he's going to dodge it, and he really wants to increase the chance that his ulti hits. Now to add on to the end of that point, flash ulti can actually be a bit of a trap as well if you're doing it from max max range, so the range of your flash and ulti combined, where here I can't actually reach this guy with ulti, but if I flash ult of course I can hit him. But if you take a look, look how slow this flash ult is. It's very easy for him to dodge it with his own flash, but if I flash ult from within my ulti range, it's of course a lot harder for him to dodge it. So pick and choose when you use the flash ult, I recommend only doing it from close range, but if you know for a fact they don't have flash, then either you don't need to use your flash at all in the first place, or you can 
can look to do it from extremely far away. But for the most part, max range flash ulting from here is not the best play unless you see the angle. Unless you see the three or four man ulti, of course it can be good, but it's very easy to flash if they see you coming. Up next, I'm going to be covering Malphite's matchups, and I just want to clarify that these are for laning phase only, where a lot of them will be more difficult later on, especially champs like Nah, champs like Vayne, champs like Fiora. Once they start to get three or four items, it can be, of course, very difficult for you to deal with them. But in terms of pure laning phase, it's not very much of a problem. Those champions are quite easy, and it's only really the strong AP lane bully champs that are going to give you a lot of problem, or the very strong bruises like Olaf and Darius that can just run you down. But for the most part, you should be able to go even and neutralize your lane on Malphite. He's one of the best neutralizers in the game, and I'll talk you through some of the matchups. Starting with the hard matchups, now Rumble is the hardest by far. I almost put him in a tier of his own, but I'll keep him in hard because not many people can pilot this champion very well, except for in ranks diamond and above. But if they can, you're going to have a tough time. You're going to look to build MR early. You're going to be down 20, 30 CS if you're lucky. But if your jungler's nice, if your jungler likes you, if he's playing a champ like Rek'Sai, then you can look to, of course, punish this Rumble. He's an immobile champion. But if it's pure 1v1 and your jungler's not helping you out, then be prepared to have a tough lane. And as for Vladimir, it's not as bad as Rumble, but especially later on when he's level 5, level 7, he has more points in Q. He's just going to sustain all your poke back that he that you queue onto him he's going to heal it back and eventually he's just going to be poking you onto tower and looking to dive you either with his jungler or by himself by resetting the tower aggro but this matchup it should be okay you shouldn't lose too much of course vladimir can't really break tower plates that well it's just you're going to be under tower getting poked the whole time and there's not real much you can do if you ultimate you'll just pull it so it's pretty hard to gank him as well and it's one of his hardest matchups now as for silas I actually don't mind this matchup too much in terms of pure 1v1, but I do always ban Silas because I don't want my team to have to play against Silas with Malphite ulti, where in this lane, if you take PTA and Ignite, you can actually look to beat him down, especially early game, and you take Ignite because he was probably going to max W against you as Silas, so you can look to cut that healing down and actually win an all-in against him. But of course he's going to look to outscale you eventually, and this I'm not going to say this matchup's good. Of course he can look to kill you with a gang with Malphite ulti as well. It's just a pretty tough matchup. I would put it a tier lower if this was for challenger only, but this tier list is for everybody, so in general it is a pretty hard matchup, and I recommend banning Silas for playing Malphite. Now as for the opponent favored matchups, the first five champs in this list are actually harder than the rest, where it's pretty hard for you, you're just going to look to be taking first strike versus the Olaf and Darius, try to maximize your gold income, and versus the other champs it's going to be quite a tough time, but you just look to build tank, trade on them with grass when you can, and you're probably going to get pushed in in these matchups most of the time. There will be timers where you can get pushed of course, but essentially in these matchups you just look to farm it out, you know it might go down a bit of CS, but in teamfights you're going to be more useful than almost all of them. Moving down to the skill matchup tier, now these matchups are the most fun, because if you know how to play that, you're going to catch a lot of people off guard. With champions like Aurelia, champs like Trin, champs like Fiora, they are so used to being able to just jump onto your head and beat you down, but versus Malphite, of course, with your E and your W, that's not always the case, where especially once you start to get 3 or 4 points into your W, you can actually start to beat them down. And especially versus a champ like Aurelia, where she jumps onto you, you use your Q movement speed to dodge your stun, and you've got 3 points in W with Bramble Vest, you're actually just going to beat her to death. And this there's a lot of matchups like that, Bramble vs early, a few points in W you'll start to win, and once you start to figure it out you're going to have a ton of fun playing these matchups. Now as for the Malphite favored matchups, it's really important for you to know which runes to take and which build to do. So for example, versus champs like Jace, Teemo, GP, the Comet build is going to have a ton of value, where even though you're still building tank, you're going to be going D-ring early with Comet and Scorch. You're going to be doing so much damage to them. Eventually, you're going to be able to kill them with your ulti, even without a gank. Of course, if you get a gank, it's free. But if you can chunk them to 50%, all of a sudden, you're able to full combo them with your ulti. And a lot of these matchups are like that. And the ones that aren't, champs like Scion, champs like Camille, you just straight up beat them up. You just get three or four points of W, and they go near you. You can just actually beat them down, and they don't really do much damage to you in return. So you're going to get pushed for the majority of these lanes, and you can use that to carry the game in a different way. You can use it to secure TP advantage, TP bot, you can roam mid, you have a lot of options on this champion and matchups where you're going to be getting permanent push, and then for the other matchups where you don't necessarily get pushed the whole time, they are just so vulnerable to either being ganked or either being killed by you once you start to give 3 or 4 points in your Q, it's going to be really hard for these ranged champions to deal with you. And as for the free matchups, champs like Quinn and Vayne can't really deal with your Q poke, and eventually they're going to be low enough for you to ulti and all in, and they don't really have any sustain to deal with you. And then champs like Wukong and Yasuo, they just can't do anything. If they go near you, you're going to pop E and beat them down with W, and you just win that trade. Where these are champions, they really want to be getting into your face and fighting you. They can't really do anything versus you, especially once you get Bramble Vest. And Maokai, it's just a free lane where you take Klipto and farm money off him. You're going to be getting pushed in some situations in the lane and some level spikes, and then you use that to move and impact the map in different ways. 
Up next, we have Malphite's identity and the mindset I want you to adapt when you're playing this champion. Because anyone that's versed Malphite in lane knows he's a pretty good neutralizer. He's not really going to punish you that hard unless you're playing a ranged champion, but for the most part, he's just going to go even with you. And if you're able to get an advantage against him, it doesn't really matter because he's such a strong team fighter and frontline for his team that even if you kill him once or twice, he's still going to be very useful in the game. And that's a big part of the mindset I want you to have, where even if you lose your lane or even if you go even, that is okay. Your job is to basically go even in your lane, you neutralize whoever you're up against, and you're going to be more useful than him out of lane for the majority of the mid game. Now, a big problem I see people make on Malphite is they play side lane too much. They're trying to push side, they're trying to make people react to them, where you're not playing Fury, you're not playing Jax, you're playing Malphite, your job inside is to make it go even and put it in a state where it's not pressuring you. Because you don't want to be in a situation where Dragon or Herald's up, you want to fight it or Baron, and there's a wave under your bot tier 2, and you have to walk all the way there and push it, and now all of a sudden there's a 5v4. What you want to be doing before that objective spawns is putting your wave in a state where you don't need to answer it. So either resetting it back to even, or one wave past even, where now... If your lane opponent wants to pressure the bot tier 2, they have to catch that wave, the next wave before they're in the tower, and you have around a minute plus, depending on how hard you push it, to essentially impact the game by grouping up with your team, looking to hard engage, and then as soon as your job is done, reset, go back to side, and do it all over again. Where well, your job in side lane is not to pressure your lane opponent. You can't really make a 5v4 situation on Malphite most of the time. You just want to be in a situation where you're not being pressured and the enemy top laner is not making a 5v4. Now, because Malphite is one of the best hard engaged champions in the game, most of the time you don't want to be TPing into a fight. Of course, there will be some situations where it's good, where there's a fight breaking out and you can TP in and change the outcome, but for the most part, if your team's sitting up around Baron, sitting up around Dragon, and they're really looking to fight this, your jungle's pinging, let's do it, you don't really want to be, oh, I'll just catch this side wave and then TP into it. The fight is going to be decided before you get there in that case. They might kill your backline, and now even though you jump in, you make their backline unable to play, you're so late to the fight that now your backline's been unable to play as well. Where if you're at the fight from the very start, hard engage for your team, your backline can do damage, they have to deal with you right they have to peel you off their backline and it's a lot harder for them to participate in the fight where if you're there late then they can do whatever they want they don't have to worry about getting Malphite ulti they can dive onto your backline and even though you're TPing in the whole time you're channeling TP you're not there so for the most part I strongly recommend being at a fight on time as Malphite and then TPing back to the side lane if you have to now, because Malphite's ulti is one of the most threatening spells in the game, there's going to be a lot of situations where it's actually best to hold it. And I'll cover this in detail in the team fighting section of the guide, but for now the mindset I want you to have in terms of your ulti is that if the backline is not doing anything, if they're respecting your ulti, they're not hitting anyone on your team, then you're already doing your job and holding your ulti is more threatening. Because once you've used it, if they flash it or if they get hit by it and survive it, now they're not scared of you at all. Your champion doesn't really provide much apart from your ulti and being a frontline, where you're not really going to threaten them once it's on cooldown. So keeping that in mind, if they're not participating in the fight, if they're not hitting anyone on your team, if they're not playing aggressive, you know, they're being wary of you, then you don't actually have to ult in the first place. You just hold it, you play front to back. If your backline's hitting and theirs is not, then you're already doing your job. And once they misstep, once they, play, once they realize, oh, we're losing this fight, they're going to walk up to play aggressive and then you strike. And the final thing I want you to keep in mind is that you're probably going to be outscaled in side lane eventually. You've probably played a lot of games where you've neutralized or won your lane, but eventually they become so strong in side lane it's hard to deal with. Champs like Fiora, champs like Jax, champs like Camille can get very, very difficult for you to verse three or four items into the game. But if you're able to have a huge impact in the game or close it out before it gets to that point, then it's not going to be a problem. And a big way you do that is by forcing fights at important objectives. So of course Dragon Soul is a big one. But in solo queue, it's very rare you actually get to Dragon Soul early on in the game before the enemy top lane has three or four items. So you really want to be playing around this Baron, where before it's up, you want to be pushing bot wave to the point where it's even or reset, and then looking to force a fight. Where two items into the game, 20 minutes, most people have around two items, depending on how fit they are. Champs like Fiora, champs like Jax, they're not going to really have Holebreaker. And champs like Fiora and Camille, especially Ravenous, Hydra, and Sundra, they're not very good at team fighting at that point. So if you can force a fight at that situation when you're at your strongest and they're not, in terms of team fighting power, then you're really going to have a huge impact in your games. Up next, we're going to be covering the mid game. And the main point about playing the mid game on Malphite, like we talked about in the identity section, is you want to be resetting your side wave either back to even or one wave past even, and then looking to group, enforce, and engage for your team. Now, in this situation, it's another green flag for Malphite as well. As soon as it hits 14 minutes, that should be your go button because tower plates have fallen. So now the worst thing you're going to lose from roaming to your team is the tier 1 tower, which of course not the biggest objective to lose, and I wouldn't normally give it in this situation, but the reason I do is because it's already 1 HP anyway, so it's not like I'm going to be able to keep this up the whole game regardless. So here I choose to give it and look to pressure the mid. 
because I'm pretty sure we just had a bot lane fight earlier on this game. I TP'd bot and the Kai'Sa no longer has flash. So I'm looking to see if he's looking to play aggressive so I can punish that. And I'm just allowing my bot lane to play the game. Because they're versus Evelyn as well. Where if I was just showing on top laning against this volley bear, keeping him at 1 HP tier 1 tower up, there's a chance that Evelyn ganks mid and kills my team. But here I see nothing is happening and now Shaq is protecting my team. So I can go back to top because I don't want to be dropping this tier 2 tower. That just gives too much control and too much gold. And now I want to be looking to reset my way back to even or one way past even and then group all over again so here of course i lose lane to volley bear and now i reset my lane to even and i see that he's leaving which is of course another big green flag for malphite when your lane opponent leaves of course that's good for you because most of the time you're going to be missing a champion you're more useful than of course malphite much more useful than volley bear where he he should be stuck in side lane right now trying to bring me back there but he's actually fogging to this play as well which means i can come and now another important point about malphite damn there's a lot of them for this example where holding your ulti is very important and we've talked about it before but here, if I were to ulti this set, of course, I'll probably kill the support set, waste of my ulti. If I ulti this volley bear, he could flash it or ulti away. Bad ult as well. And I really want to be holding it so that Evelyn can't play the game until the right time. And here, they group up together. They stack as two. And the mid tower is about to fall. So I choose that opportunity to flash ulti. Now, the reason I flash ulti, even though I was in ult range, of course, we've talked about it in the combo section, the ability section, where flash ult's harder for them to react to. And I'm pretty sure Volley had flash, at the very least, Set would have had it. And now, because I was able to flash ult onto them, they are unable to dodge it. And I chose it at a timer where Evelyn just wasted her charm, her CC, and then we're able to punish the mid. And of course, they surrendered the game off it. Don't want to toot my own horn, but I'd, li I'd like to say I carried that situation. And the main point. The main way I carried that situation is I didn't let myself get stuck in side lane from volley. I was looking to reset it to even and fog to my team. And even though it didn't work the first time, I punished Volleybear's mistake where he left the lane. He wasn't trying to keep me trapped there and I just roamed with him because even though he leaves, I don't want to be stuck there farming while he's making it a 5v4 for his team. I want to be a part of it. And most of the time, that's going to favor Malphite because he's one of the strongest hard engaged champions in the game. And especially early on in one to two items, he's the most useful top laner. Up next, I'm going to show an example of how Malphite should be looking to close out the game. So in this game, I'm versus a very strong split pusher. He's playing Fiora, and I've been ganked a couple of times. I'm not the strongest Malphite in the world. I'm 0-2-1, but I still know how the macro should look like. I still know how to make my champion be useful. So here, I ward behind me, so Fiora, of course, can't flank me. Because I'm pretty sure in the last fight I used this ghost and ulti, there's no way I can die. And I reset the wave one wave past even. And now that I've done this, I look to force the Baron. And the reason I just TP and instantly look to force it, there's two reasons actually. I saw the enemy team had bad tempo. They stayed on the map too long after a fight, which means they have to base. So I look to force as fast as possible. But the secondary reason is that Fiora, she is eventually going to be too strong for me to deal with. She's going to get a whole break of third, and she's going to be able to break towers in front of me. So if I don't look to close out the game early and take a risk, we're going to lose. Now, of course, this is a risk. They could look to steal it. But if their jungler walked up to the wall, I would have altered him over the wall, slowed him down, and secured the Baron for my team. And you have to be able to take a risk like this when you're behind on Malphite. Because it's not really a risk. This is in our favor. We win 5v5, even though their Fiora is stronger, because he only has two items. He's got Hydra and Sundra. His team fighting is very weak until he gets the three, four items, to t until he starts to get Holebreaker and Death Stance. He can't really match my power in a team fight, even though I'm 0, 2, and 1. And because I forced this Baron situation for my team, hard calling it, TPing in, and starting it, and if their jungler looked to steal, it, I'll ult him over, and of course there's still a risk, right? If he looks to flash my ulti and steal the Baron, he can, but you're never going to be able to play every situation 100% where there's no way you're going to fail it. And in this situation, because I'm behind, I had to take a small risk, but it was a calculated one. Fiora couldn't match my team fighting power. She wasn't strong enough to break towers in front of me yet. So if I didn't look to force now, it would have been too hard to do so in the future. And to finish off, I wanted to show an example of how to play the macro on AP first strike Malphite, where a lot of the concepts are the same, but there are some slight differences. And here, I look to reset the wave to even or one way past even. In this situation, actually, I get it pretty high up because Olaf is not there which is just an opportunity for me to clear the wave high. And now I look to play in the jungle and look to engage on them, where normally I'd be looking to group with my team, be a frontline, be a hard engage for them. But now I'm playing a little bit more selfishly, where I go into the jungle, I'm pinking it up. Normally I'd have sweeper and I look to punish them for getting vision. Where, to be honest, in this example, it would have worked on tank Malphite as well, but I was looking for it a lot more on this build. Because even if my team wasn't here to follow me up, I would have been able to one-shot that Janna. And at the very least, even if I couldn't kill them, 
With the movement speed from your Q, 5.2 Q and Lich Bane, if you full combo them with ulti, use your spells very quickly and run away, they can't really turn onto you. By the time they reach the floor, they fall back down from your ulti, and you're already halfway out of there with the extra movement speed that, and even if you don't kill them, you're going to be getting a lot of gold from first strike that it's worth it, but just for the most part on the AP Malphite, on the first strike build, you're going to be looking to be more creative, punish them for getting vision, try to get behind them, try to flank, because your ulti is a lot more threatening in terms of damage, and you are actually able to escape after doing the ulti round tank malfi you're kind of fully committed to being there so here's another example from that same game where i just based and head back to bot and my team got caught a dragon so i i don't care about that i look to reset the wave back to even or one wave past even in this situation and then i look to pressure them where even though i beat this olaf right now because i beat him in lane i'm ahead of him i don't really want to do that i don't want to be fighting this guy in the side lane wasting my time i want to be pressuring their team so at first i wait here see if anyone wants to walk in to get vision but then eventually i see Cogmore on the wave so i look to wait near this bush and if he ever plays aggressively i'll punish him and a lot of times He's not going to walk up and get punished, right? In that situation, I'll go back bot when I need to. And that's the important thing you need to realize when playing Malphite, is right now I don't need to go bot. My wave state is not urgent. I have no rush to go there. And he's still got another wave before he even reaches the tower. And I would have gone in the next 10 seconds if Cogmore didn't walk up after our team got this next mid wave. But Cogmore did walk up, so I was able to punish and get back to my wave on time. So you'll get used to the timing once you practice it, resetting the wave to even, fogging between the lanes, waiting to see if there's an opportunity for you to strike. And if there's not, you go back to the side and look to repeat that process until eventually someone makes a mistake and you're able to capitalize on it. Now, the way I close out this game is the exact same as a Fiora game, where I reset bot wave back to even just before Baron spawns, and I'm running straight there and I'm telling my team force. Normally I'd just ping, but I wanted to be extra clear, because even though I'm very strong at this point, it's not like I scale very well. Eventually Olaf will get to the point where I can't deal with him, once he starts to get around three items, especially if he goes holebreaker, and I want to have either closed out the game, or had it very much in our favor before that point. So I run straight here with my strength, I clear all the vision, and I look to pressure them. If they walk into this Baron, I'll full combo them and flash away probably, but my damage on Baron is not that high, so I'm essentially just protecting it. Where this is a bit different on tank Malphite, you want to be uh, tanking the Baron, but on this AP build, you're not that tanky, Baron does shred you a bit, and also your ulti is so much threatening, you can actually, you have lethal on a lot of champions, so it's better to pressure the side. And now Karthus walks up trying to steal it, and of course I ult him over the wall, and he wouldn't have been able to get in that situation, but the concept applies, where as soon as Baron spawned, even before that point, I wanted my bot wave in a state where I don't have to answer it, answer it, and I look to force Baron as much as I can. And of course, every game, you're not going to be able to do that. You can't win every game of League of Legends, but that, for the most part, is going to be your game plan heading into it, especially when you've got strong side laning champions. Up next, we're going to be covering team fighting, and to simplify team fighting on Malphite, I've broken it down into two very important concepts for you. The first one being tag the prior targets, and the second one being hold your ulti. Now in this situation I have to use both, where to paint the picture, their Vex is the strongest player on their team and he's been carrying the majority of the fights. He's been hitting big ultis, big fears, and if I just let him do what he wants, he's going to carry these fights. Where Caitlyn, she is not a problem for me. She does zero damage, she's not very threatening, and she can't really play that aggressively versus my champ, so I don't really need to keep much of an eye on her. So even if she shoots me here and does no damage, I just need to make sure Vex is un unable to hit my team, where if I find her, run towards her, cue her, step at her, even if she blows all her spells on me, it doesn't matter and for the most part i just want to be blocking your ulti and not letting her reach my team so here i'm able to find her and i'm just going on to her i'm beating her down where if i ulti the caitlin here it doesn't do anything and if i ulti her even though she's the prior target no one on my team can follow up which is the second concept holding your ulti is very important here if i was to blow my ulti on in my opinion the most important target vex it'd be a waste if i was to ulti the caitlin it'd be a waste but now the second they group up that's my opportunity to strike they made a mistake in their positioning, which came because I was holding my ulti, and now there's a situation where, boom, I'm able to get a big ulti, my team's actually able to follow up, and we're able to, we don't actually win this fight, to be honest, this Lee Sin goes sicko mode, but I had the best chance of winning this fight, because I held my ulti and I, I marked the prior target, where Vex, the strongest player on their team, was unable to carry the fight, and I had the highest chance for my team to win it, where that Lee Sin played, he deserved to win that fight, let's be real, but I used the best possible, I played that team fight the best possible way I could, in terms of marking the prior targets and holding my ulti till it was the right time to use it.
And although the holding your ulti concept is most important in teamfights, it's also very important in skirmishing as well. Where here, there is there, of course, the prior target. I could look to ult him now, but no one can really follow up. It's not very pressuring. Where the fact that I have ulti in this situation is the most pressuring. It makes the top lane a TP in to save the Azir, and we're able to burn him down. We're able to change CC him and kill him before he gets his ult off, and we're still able to kill this Azir. Because I held my ulti that whole time, Azir felt like he was unable to play, and then as soon as he saw me use his ulti, he stepped up, but from that point it was too late. We've already won the fight because I use my ulti at a good time. So to finish off, I have another example of where holding ulti is good, but I really wanted to showcase another concept at the end of it, where you really want to be, as soon as the fight's over, since you've blown your ulti, you need to register when the fight is done and either base or head back to side, as fast as you can because if you don't you're going to be in a lot of situations versus side laning champions where if they finish the fight first if they leave and go to side now the first thing you have to do after recalling is answer them where during that time they can make a 5v4 situation nice little ulti hold there but for the most part what i want you to realize is that as soon as the fight is done which most of the time is after you've blown your ulti and you'll see when the fight is done and you're just hoping they walk back in for a fight you just instead of that you just want to be having discipline and base as fast as you can and going to the side lane because if you get to the side lane before your lane opponent even if he beat you in lane even if he's playing a champ like Olaf a champ like Darius and he can just really beat you in the side if you get there before him it's not a problem you're not even going to be versing him so you can push the wave in that situation past even and then you have another time at a group of your team and force another team fight situation which is really what you want to be doing but if you're to base late if you're to blow your ulti in a fight kill a couple people and then hang around doing doughies around your AD carry trying to protect him when there's no real fight happening anymore then you can be in a situation where you're stuck but they can make a 5v4 which is really what you want to be avoiding and the way to do that is to maintain good tempo and to recall or head back to side as fast as you can once the play is finished. Up next, we're going to be covering drafting so that when you look to pick Malphite and Solar Q, you know the best situations to play him, what looks good with him on your team, what looks bad with him, and what you don't want to be versing when you pick this champion. And even if you don't want to play Solar Q with him, if you just want to play fives with the boys or Clash, this section will help you a lot because you know exactly what sort of team comps you want to be building and you can help them build a nice looking team comp with Malphite. So first of all, if you're going into a game wanting to play Malphite no matter what, I strongly recommend that you ban Silas. Because even if you don't verse the top lane Silas, let's say you've already seen Nah, you've already seen your lane opponent, there's still a good chance they go mid lane Silas. And that is a problem because your team now has to play against Silas with Malphite ulti, and I strongly recommend never putting them in that situation. Now as for your jungle, Malphite most of the time doesn't want to be receiving any ganks pre-6, so he's actually one of the better champs to play with a farming jungler. Champs like Hecarim and champs like Nocturne are best because not only are they farming junglers, but they are also hard engaged as well. And Malphite likes to stack as much engage as possible to dive in with him. So champs like Nocturne and Hecarim, who want to come online around six same time as you, and also in team fights want to be doing the same thing as you, are really fun to play with. But that doesn't mean you have to have a farming jungler, of course. No one hates getting ganks. Champs like Rek'Sai, Lisa, and Zidzel, all fine. But I'm just saying, ideally, the farming junglers that want to hard engage with you are really strong with Malphite. Because you scale not super well later on into the game, and they do. So if you're playing Malphite Rek'Sai, for example, the scaling is just too bad. And as for mid, it's normally a champion like Yasuo, of course, Malphite Yasuo famous combo, Yone very good, but it doesn't have to be. If you have an AD jungler as well, you don't really want to be playing Hecarim Yasuo, that's pretty terrible, so for the most part, it just wants to be a champion that dives in with you. Champs like Akali, very good, champs like Silas is good with Malphite, even though you're banning in this situation, champs like Fizz is actually not bad, and then as for ADC, Kaiser is the best, he can follow you up to the backline, Tristana good as well. You just don't really want to be playing Malphite with champ like Ash or Varus, but it doesn't matter to be honest. What champions you have as ADC doesn't affect if you're playing Malphite or not. And then as for support, a hard engaged champ is always best. Rel, Alistair, champs like that feel very good with Malphite. And as for the champs you don't want to see on your team, it's champions that want to be kiting back. So champs like Zoe mid, champs like Nidalee jungle, they don't really want to be running forward with you. They want to be kiting back. And it's pretty hard for you to just peel for them on Malphite. You want to be ulting in. You don't really want to be ulting the front line as Malphite. In some situations it's best, of course, but for the most part, you want to be using your ulti to throw in the back line. So if you're playing that peel style with champs like Zoe, it's probably better to be a tank like Cassante. Moving on to champs you want to be seeing on the enemy team from top lane, it's going to be champions that you and your jungler can see as a resource. So champs like Nah, champs like Jace, very easy for you and your jungler to kill them with ganks, and they have to play exceptionally well to survive that pressure. And if they are playing that well and surviving that pressure, you're essentially getting a free lane anyway, because that means they're respecting the jungler, they're not playing aggressive. And as for junglers, you want to be versing champs that are AD centric and auto attack centric. So champs like Graves, champs like Kindred, very nice to verse as Malphite. Kindred, a bit less so because of his ulti. But it's still a good matchup. Kindred into Malphite, he can't really gank you. And in teamfights, if you hit an E onto him, he's not really going to do much. But Graves is the best, so I'll put him back in. 
And then as for mid, of course, ideally you'll be versing a full AD comp, but I'm not going to put that in. That's a bit of a joke where you're not going to be versing that very often. You want to be versing immobile mages. So champs like Zeraf are very good because normally high range comps are countered by hard engage, which of course Malphite, one of the best engages in the game, and most high range champions are very immobile. So you see a Jace and Zeraf, two of the highest range champs in the game, they don't really have any escape to dodge your ulti except for flash. So if their flash is on cooldown, they're essentially a free kill. And now for AD carry, it's the same vein where immobile uh, carries, champs like Varus and champs like Caitlyn are very good. I actually prefer Caitlyn over Varus, even though she has a dash, because Varus has mixed damage where Caitlyn is pure AD. So ADCs that don't have mixed damage are very good. Champs like Jinx and Caitlyn, very easy for you to verse because they have no mobility. Even Aphelios, not so much. He's a newer champ. He does a bit more damage. Red, white, good night. But uh, most of these champions that are just full AD with no mix are very easy for you to verse. And as for support... To be honest, it doesn't matter too much. I just prefer versing tank supports like Nautilus and Leona because you can block their engage for your team. I prefer this over Enchanters because if you ulti the backline and the Enchanter and the AD carry is separated, he's just, of course, just going to buff up his ADC and mitigate your threat. But for the most part, it doesn't matter too much. I mainly like to see the ADC mid and top before I pick Malphite and jungle as a factor as well. And as for the champs you don't want to be versing on the enemy team, it's of course going to be matchups in the hard tier. Rumble, Vlad, Silas, very difficult, especially Rumble is the hardest by far. Jungles, you don't really want to be versing early pressure jungles that much. So Rek'Sai with Rumble, of course, so much kill threat on you, at least with Renekton, of course, so on and so forth. These champions, they can actually look to punish you pre-6 when you're at your weakest. And then as for mid, you don't want to be versing super mobile champions. So champs like Ari, champs like LeBlanc, very easy for them to tag you if you're trying to flank, and it's very easy for them to dodge your ulti if you try now as for AD carry, you don't want to be versing the same thing, champs that can dodge your ulti easy or champs that have a lot of mixed damage. So a champ like Kog'Maw, if they're playing Kog'Milio or Kog'Lulu, even though your ulti is quite good into him, it's going to be hard for you to verse. He does so much mixed damage, he's going to shred you. And champs like Kaiser as well, not as bad, but she's quite mobile. And champs like Zaya, she can dodge your ulti with her ulti. Stuff like that are uh, pretty hard. So I'll put Zaya in for now. Kog'Maw, I'd probably prefer to verse Kog than a good Zaya, but if I was to play in lower ranks, I'd probably prefer to play against the Zaya because Cog, Lulu, Cog, Milio are a lot easier to execute. And then as for support, you don't want to be versing, of course, Enchanters, champs like Milio. Milio's not on this website, so I'll just put Lulu in instead. Enchanters that look to mitigate the damage and threat you have on the backline. I'm next going to be going through a full game review of a recent solo key game I've played, and I'm going to be talking you through my full process throughout this entire game. So from level 1, I ward because they ward my jungler's blue, so I ward the enemy blue, just in case my jungler wants to cross from his red to the enemy blue, so we can see what's going on. So I ward that for that reason, and I'm up against Scion. So I'm going to speed up this lane, of course, because very, very boring matchup, where it's Malphite favored, in my opinion, because once you start to get more points in W, you just look to beat him down. And his poke doesn't really do anything to you. So I look to go Doran Shield because of course he has three poking abilities that he can use onto me. And D-Ring's not going to be very useful. He can block my Q with his W. So Doran Shield's better in this matchup. And I'm going to be running Grasp, of course, really good in this matchup because we're going to be looking to fight a lot, hit each other a lot in lane, where Comet's not really going to do much. And Klepto, first strike, not very good in this matchup because... It can be the difference maker. Having Grass can make me win this matchup, where first strike I'm just playing the scale, but in this game I wanted to be looking to win this matchup. So here I get push because of course I'm stronger and I've got Grass, and I look to fog towards the blue. Now keeping in mind my champion is very useless in level 3 skirmishing, so I'm mainly just fogging. I'm just dipping into fog of war so the enemy team has to respect me, but of course they don't really because they, uh, they know I'm a level 3 malfight, so they just look to kill my mid laner. Now in this situation, Fogging didn't really do much, but in lower elo brackets, of course it will. They'll see a champion is missing in action. Their lane will ping missing, missing. It'll put a bit of pressure onto them. But in this situation, it of course did nothing, but there's nothing for me to gain by being in the lane anyway. So from now, I'm looking to let the wave come back into me because I don't really want to base it at this time and let Sion get a free base as well. And I'm going to be looking to punish him when he goes for CS. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to kill him at this timer. I probably don't. No, I know I don't. But it's just better to let the wave come into me at this timer because I don't want to reset because he's in a position where he needs to reset as well. So it's better for me to farm outside my tower and give my jungler an option. But from now, my jungler he doesn't take the option because, of course, it's Malphite versus Sion and it's not very valuable for him. But, of course, the option's still there if he wanted it. So I'm just looking to poke him with my W, farm this, farm the farm, and then get level 6 without anything bad happening. Which is exactly what's probably going to happen, and I'll speed it up even more, because this is what you should expect in a lot of your Malphite lanes. You're a neutralizer, and this game I'm up against a neutralizer as well, so nothing is really going to happen. 
So my thought process now is just to get a base off, but he walks past me, which of course, if you can get behind someone as a level five Malphite, three points W, very good opportunity to beat them down, which is exactly what I do, but there's not really much threat I have of diving him. So I just look to base. Of course, I have no mana. Even if I had ulti, I probably wouldn't dive him there because I'd be using my ulti. He could always flash it. And even if I do kill him, he's just going to clear the whole wave with his passive. So here I TP back because I see San fast pushing the wave and if I TP I can of course freeze it outside my tower, deny him gold and XP and then if he TPs back he's still going to lose something and if he doesn't he'll lose a lot. So I TP back for this reason and I'm just looking to hold this freeze and deny him gold and XP. And if he doesn't TP back it's not a problem I get pushed in this matchup so I can secure when I recall so I'm not too worried about that. The only worry I would have is if he impacts the game from going bot but like I said I have push it's pretty hard for him to TP at a time without losing a lot. So here I'm just looking to slow push the wave because even though I froze initially to deny him a wave of golden XP, I don't want to be freezing forever on my champion. I want to be roaming around the map, impacting the game, and if I can keep him stuck under his tower, fog mid, now it's hard for their mid laner to play the game. Even though it's not mid game from this point, I win my matchup so it's something I can do. Which is exactly what I want to be doing, we're losing this game, I want to be impacting as early as possible before the game is just over. So slow push this wave, look to punish him with my W and grasp, and as you see I'm up a level from denying him the golden XP, and now I'm going to be looking to fog. So I thought their jungler was invading our red, which he was, it got pinged out, so I go towards it, but I didn't realize Nautilus was here. And luckily I'm able to dodge the Q, and if you'll notice I awarded the Herald, because it's very important for my jungler to see if I awarded Herald or not, as I've talked about many many times, but if he sees the enemy jungler wasting 30 seconds to kill Herald, he now has a big option to impact the game through diving bot. So I award it for that reason, and also we could look to fight it if they look to contest it, and I'm just looking to respect the pressure of the enemy jungler, but now I see him mid, I can look to start pushing again. Especially because Sion has no mana, I don't really want to be giving him a free base. So I'm going to look to one-shot this wave essentially instead of slow pushing. Now I don't know what he was doing there. He should have been trying to recall. Of course he has no mana. But now I just want to be looking to keep him stuck in the lane. So from this point, I'm just going to skip ahead of the laning phase because there's not much to it. Malphite versus Sion, of course, two neutralizers, two beefy boys hitting each other. But the reason I wanted to showcase this is because I want you guys to be comfortable in playing matchups like this. This is an educational guide, and I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of situations like this where you can't just dominate your lane, you can't get solo kills, and you need to be comfortable with it because on Malphite, there's going to be so many situations where you don't snowball early, but you can carry the game mid to late game if you know the macro, if you know what you're doing, because this champion, of course, one of the strongest team fighters, one of the strongest hard engagers, you don't necessarily need to win your lane and this is a good example of that so i'm going to skip at the head of the lane for now and i'll see you guys in the next sequence and now's my chance to impact the game where i'm strong enough now i've got sunfire cape that i can start to proxy the wave and you won't always be able to do this but if you can it's very good because if you can proxy wave between the towers not only does that mean your recall is more efficient you'll get back to lane faster but it also means if you tp bot now then the sound doesn't have a wave to use to break top tower so here i see an opportunity to tp we are looking to kill the Samara, but it could be very tempting for me to ult her straight away now. But one, I don't know if she has flash or not, and two, no one can really follow me up. Because of course Bria can't control who she's going on, she's hitting the Nautilus, so I hold my ulti for the right time. And here I see the situation, boom, I was hoping to hit the three-man ulti there, and if I did this would have been so clean because Rao wouldn't have been able to CC my whole team. So it's really unfortunate I was only able to hit two, but you can see holding your ulti most of the time is just going to be better overall, where if I was able to hit three there we would have won that situation outright, but even though I held it and hit two, it was still a pretty, I wouldn't say an even trade, but we're really far behind this game, look at their bot lane has seven kills to L1, so if I was able, so because I was able to double kill their bot it really slows down their momentum. So from this point, after TPing bot and double killing them, I'm just hitting straight back top and looking to repeat the process, where I want to be keeping Scion stuck under tower and then using my ulti to impact the map. Of course I don't have TP this time, but I can always look to run into their jungle, run mid and pressure in that way. Where here, of course, 5 points W, I look to beat, I win the trade outright. Malphite wins against most tanks when you have a lot of points at W, and especially I have Sunfire versus Heartsteel, where his is more of a scaling item. So of course I win the trade, so I'm able to get him quite low, but the problem is he has TP, because I use mine to impact the game bot, and he's using his selfishly. Which is of course not recommended when you're playing champs like Scion, champs like Malphite, but that's what he chooses to do. And I'm able to get fruit, and even though I'm not full in mana, I'm still okay to stay in the lane. So now he TPs back and I'm pretty sure I receive a gank here. And as you notice back then, I'm going to skip back, I actually looked at the dragon. So the reason I didn't rotate down to here, even though it looks like I should, is just because I'm realistic about it. Their whole team is kiting down bot river, where if they see me coming through midwave, they are just going to leave to the bot tower. 
Now, it's unrealistic that they stay and they keep fighting the whole time, the whole 30 seconds it takes me to walk here. They see me on midwave and they just let me walk up and ult them, right? That's just unrealistic. If I wanted to be a part of this dragon, I would have come here 30, 20 seconds before it spawned and then been a part of the fight. And if they saw me coming then, they would just respect me and give the dragon for free. But in this situation, drag's already gone, and they're, they're running down Bot River, so even if I was to come to this fight, the chance that really uh, I'm able to be a part of it is very low, and even if I am, even the best case scenario, one guy stays around playing too aggressive, and I kill one, Silent's going to break my whole tower, he's going to keep my wave stuck under the top tier 2, and now I have to base, run top, catch their wave, and now he can carry the game in his own way. So it's better for me to stay in my lane, and not waste time, and just not have unrealistic expectations of running around the map. So I'll skip back ahead, where we're back to laning against the Scion, and it's a, not as one-sided as before, now of course he's level 11, he's got a bit more items, but of course I still win, I have a lot of points at W, and my Talia comes to gank for me, which is nice, we're able to secure the free kill, and now I'm lower mana, so I just looked at one shot this wave, and then normally I would base here and run out on map, but I don't have ulti at all, so it's not very useful for me to be held on the map, and Scion is dead for such a long time with no TP, so instead I look to greed for this tower. Which of course greeting on Malphite not recommended, but when I have no ulti, there's no neutral objective up at all for me to be a part of, then it's fine. So that's exactly what I do. So now from this point I'm hitting straight top out of base, and my reason for going top instead of bot, one, Talia's already there, but normally I wouldn't mind kicking him out, but Baron and Dragon are two and a half minutes from spawning, so there's no reason to really mess with the lane assignments for no reason. There's no clear objective where if Baron was up, for example, I would be sending Talia top and I would go bot, because if we were all playing for Baron, she's probably going to die as a side lane Talia, but now no objective is up, it doesn't really matter, and here I re reset, one wave to even, and run straight mid. I don't want to be fighting this Diana, even though I beat her, I don't want to be wasting time inside, I want to be running straight mid every time I can, and if there's no play, I'll go back top, but in this example, there is. And here I hold my ulti, wait for them to blow their spells, and now boom, now's my chance to strike, get the two-man ulti on their fed Samira, and we're able to win this fight. Where even though Diana, I blocked the Sion ulti as well, not too shabby, even though Diana was only 12 to 15 seconds later than me, that's all it took. That's why I recommend not TPing into a fight later as Malphite, because that 4 seconds you're not there can make all the difference. Being at the fight first, having your actual body there, can make all the difference in these situations. Because especially Malphite, your ulti is instant, you want to be there, able to use it at all situations. And here, as you notice, as soon as I use my ulti, as soon as the fight's done, I base straight away. I'm not wasting time, I'm not bashing the tower, I'm not farming camps, I'm basing instantly, heading back to the side, so I can put the side wave in a situation where I don't have to deal with it in the future. So now from this point, I'm heading straight to Bot River, because I want to control the dragon area for the next team fight. and I would prefer if Talia had based earlier, so I could get the bot wave in as well, but it's fine, she must have greeted for an item, I'll just play accordingly. But it's bad for her to greet her tempo like that because now she's going to be coming back onto the map very slowly. But it's fine, top wave is not urgent for me, it doesn't really matter. It's just her mistake means that if they wanted to, they could have broken top tower for this dragon. Which is of course fine, this is the third dragon, I don't mind that trade. But it's best not to give anything if you don't have to. So here, because I'm playing in their face, but I'm the tankish champ in the game right now, they can't really do anything to me, which is why I was playing so aggressively. They look to go on me and essentially we get a good fight for free. Where I see Samira's chunked, I'm able to just one shot her with my ulti. And because because I was close enough to her, it was hard for her to flash it. She still could have, of course, but if she flashes away from me in a fight, when she's half HP, she essentially can no longer fight anyway, and then we just look to clean up the back end of the fight. Now, the reason this fight worked out is because I knew my limits there, where they have Psy on top, Rao jungle, Dynamid, nobody is going to kill me. It doesn't matter if they engage onto me, even though my team is far away, but in another scenario where they had a ton of damage, let's say their Syndra's fed, they have a fed Kog'Maw, something like that, a vein, then of course I wouldn't have played so disrespectfully, but you just need to play relative to how much damage they have and how much damage they can do to you. So now from this point, it's 20 minutes into the game, which means Baron is spawn. And like we've talked about Malphite, the main way you close out the game is by starting a Baron situation, where you're going to look to turn on them with your ulti if you start the Baron, or take over their jungle and ult them if they walk in. So here, I'm going bot with the intention to reset my wave to even, or one wave past even, and then look to bring my body to Baron, which means if they're trying to use the bot wave to pressure tier 2, it's going to take them so long we're going to be able to secure the Baron. But here, a pretty cool situation occurs where I hear my Bria ulti, and of course it's Shurn, he's been my pro player jungler for many years now, so I trust that it's going to hit instantly blind, 
and I just TP straight away, which was a pretty cool combo. I got pretty excited about it in the game, but the problem is I got too excited. I ulti too early, where of course we talked about holding your ulti is better, and Dino was actually able to dodge it with her E. Where if I hold it, held it till this point, it got the three man ulti, of course it'd be a lot better, but the situation still works out well. I just thought it was a pretty cool thing to show. But for the most part, even if that didn't happen, even if he missed his ulti, I would have reset my way back to even, ran to this Baron, and looked to start a situation where if they walk into us, I'm going to turn on them with my ulti, and we're going to be able to win the fight, especially with Samira having no flash. And if they don't, we're just going to be able to get the Baron for free and use that to close out the game in a different way. Our next one will be covering how to play against Malphite, and the first thing you need to know is that Malphite's counterpicks are a lot harder than with other champions, where for example, if you're blinding Camille, and you versus a Fiora or a Jax, if you're very comfortable on Camille, you're probably going to be fine in those matchups, whereas if you blind Malphite for example, even if you're really good at Malphite, if you verse a confident Rumble or Silas player, you're going to have a very tough time in those matchups. So that's something to keep in mind when you see Malphite blind on an enemy team, that he has some very, very difficult matchups to play, and if you have one of them in your champion pool, it's going to be very beneficial. And the next point is you should be looking to punish this champion pre-6, because in a lot of matchups you get push against him, and if you're able to get push, you can of course crash the third wave, let the wave come back into you, and then you can really look to punish him around wave 4, wave 5 while it's outside your tower, and especially if your jungler sees that opportunity as well, he can punish him as well, because before Malphite gets 6, before he gets tank items, he has a free kill, he has no gap closes, he has no escape, he's pretty easy to kill, and a lot of champions you play beat him in the 1v1 early on before he gets his tank items, before he gets his bramble, he is quite squishy and quite easy to punish on a lot of matchups so if you're in one of those matchups and you could refer to the tailors before then you should be looking to gain an advantage pre-6 and as for the mid game you're going to be looking to keep Malphite stuck in the side lane make him answer you make him stuck under his tower make him feel like if he leaves to engage on your team you're going to get a lot so you can't really participate in the game because if you beat Malphite in the side lane Chances are he is stronger than you in team fights at least early game. If you're champ like Fiora, champ like Jax, and you win the side lane against him, your team fighting is not going to be as strong as him. So if you can make him answer you, keep him stuck there, and if he ever leaves, you break open his base then that is the best case scenario, because you're either going to be making the game a 4v4, or in some cases if you're ahead of 5v4, where you keep him stuck and you join your team, or at the very least you're making him choose, where if he wants to participate in the game, team fight with his team, he's going to lose a lot, and if he doesn't, he's going to be stuck under his tower farming his Malphite and unable to play the game. And the next tip mainly applies when you're playing a champion that's under a lot of threat of his ulti, so if you're playing a champ like Nair, a champ like Jace, where if you get Malphite ultied into a gank, you're probably just going to die, or if you get ulti during a team fight, it's hard to survive, and in that situation, you want Want to be pre-planning your flash ahead of time so you want to be assessing malphite ult as the biggest threat and thinking in your head as soon as this guy ults me i'm going to flash it and you're ready in advance to dodge it because even if you're good enough to react flashes uh ulti most of the time not most of the time sorry there's going to be a lot of situations where you don't pull it off where if you're pre-planning it ahead of time then your success rate is going to be way higher and it doesn't have to just be for flash a champ with a gap closer you can uh, plan out ahead of time to dodge it or if you're a parry stuff like that but essentially you're just pre-planning Malphite's ulti before he even uses it and having your counter plan in mind and the final tip and in my opinion one of the most important track Malphite's moves proactively for your team so what I mean by proactively and not reactively is you know from the mid game section that Malphite's going to look to reset the wave to even and fog mid look to hard engage for his team and be a part of a team fight but you can know that ahead of time, where he's clearing the wave near you, and you can already be uh, danger pinging your team. You can be pinging a line up the river where Malphite's going, and let them know Malphite is on his way. Where if you do it reactively, let's say he's halfway up the river by the time you ping, but your AD carry has already chosen to play aggressive, it's a lot harder for him to break out of that bloodlust mentality. And I'm not saying if you do it pro uh, proactively, they're going to survive it every time. You're going to play with some people soft inting or some disrespectful solo queue teammates. But for the most part, if you track it ahead of time, it gives your team a lot higher chance to play around it and survive the insane engage range that Malphite has. Now to wrap it up, we're going to be going through the main takeaways that I want you to burn into your brain, where for early game, you should be okay with going even or neutralizing your lane opponent, because there's not a lot of champions in this game where Malphite can really dumpster them in lane. There are some, but a lot of them you're going to be content with going even and carrying the game later on. And when tower plates fall, that is your green flag to start impacting the map as much as possible because you're not too worried about what they're going to gain in return. Now as for mid game, you want to be looking to reset the wave to even or one wave past even and then looking to fog between the side lane and mid lane where if there's a good opportunity that you see on the map, if their bot lane's playing aggressively mid, of course you'll commit and if there's no opportunity, then you fog back down to bot, clear the next wave and repeat the cycle. And as for late game, the way you're going to be closing out the game is forcing an early Baron situation because if you verse a lot of strong side laning champions, eventually they're going to get too powerful for you to deal with so you want to be looking to secure baron for your team before that point because it's very very hard to play side lane against a baron team so if you could secure that as early as possible even if they start to get their whole breaker later on 
you're going to be fine. Your team's going to be ahead from the advantage you give them from being such a strong team fighter. And then as for team fighting, the most important takeaway is hold your ultimate because the threat of a Malphite ult coming down and taking you out when you're playing aggressively is a lot more scary than a Malphite that just ults straight away. And if you're surviving it or if you flash it, now all of a sudden there's no threat on you at all. Okay guys, I'm going to end it there and I'm glad I got this guy done because I have a lot of good memories of playing this champion throughout my career and I think he's just pretty unique in the sense that you can play him from IM through to Challenger, he's good in pro games, LCK, LPL, it doesn't matter. This champion is always good in all levels of play in League and I think that makes him pretty special. But as usual guys, if you have any concept or champion you want to see me cover next, let me know below and apart from that, I'll see you guys next time.